Good day, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Art on Royal and Royal Caribbean. Ed Reed, your art director, along with Mike Thompson, your port and shopping agent. Today we're going to be talking about Thomas Kincaid. Now, unfortunately, Thomas Kincaid passed away a few weeks ago at the, at the very young age of 54. Uh, he seemed to be troubled that he didn't get critical acclaim, but he had a tremendous amount of commercial success. In fact, it's estimated that one in four, it used to be one in 20, but now they're saying one in four people own a Thomas Kincaid in their home. And why is that? I think it resonates with everyone uh, in, in the spirit of Norman Rockwell, in the spirit of Walt Disney. These beautiful scenes, they just depict happiness and joy. And Mike, I'd like you to value add on that. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about Thomas Kincaid? Well, I think the it's painter of light, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's interesting that you mentioned uh, Norman Rockwell because Norman Rockwell was one of Tom Kincaid's very first patrons, and in fact uh, was one of his one of his early mentors. And you'll often see uh, in Thomas Kincaid's paintings in his in his works. Uh, it, whenever you see a man smoking a pipe in a Thomas Kincaid, that's an homage to Rockwell. That's, that's wow. a kind of a shout out to, to one of the major influences in his, on him as an artist. That, that's, that's very uh, kind of him. And in addition, isn't it, in fact, his wife Nanette, the N of right, her the, name? The hidden ends in the, uh, the, in, the in, in the Thomas Kincaid paintings. Uh, over here by the signature, there's always a number, and that number is the number of hidden ends, the homages to his wife. And you'll often see references in there to his, to his daughters as well. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. And you mentioned the, the name Painter of Light. Uh, yeah. And, uh, is that a, a, a cliche now these days? Well, no, it? it's, it's what he called himself. It, it, and so it's it his was, own moniker, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was kind of his, uh, his tagline, which is cool. But it's interesting, and uh, another interesting bit of trivia, he got that name when he was working as a background illustrator for Ralph Bakshi's animation studios. He was one of the first to incorporate kind of, uh, uh, all, the, all the backgrounds are painted on, on celluloid, right, which is clear surface. And he would take and he would scratch away the paint on the celluloid so that you could put light behind it and it would look as though the town or whatever was, was lit. And he, he was an innovator in that. And he, that's the reason that Ralph Bakshi actually coined the term, the painter of light, used Wonderful. in Thomas Kincaid. Now, uh, Thomas is uh, selling very well. Uh, we, as far as scarcity goes, now that he's dead, I, I don't believe there's going to be a scarcity of Thomas Kincaid. Uh, do you agree with me? Well, Ed, Ed, that's one of the things about Thomas Kincaid. It's one of the knots that he got. He's prolific. Be, well, because he was so commercial. Uh, but it's an important to understand Thomas Kincaid's philosophy. Thomas Kincaid, every single painting that he did was an expression of his faith, his desire to spread the gospel of Christ. He was a very... A uh, devout Christian during his lifetime, and every single one of his works of art was a testimony to his faith. And uh -huh. some of them very overtly so, some of them less so. Uh -huh. But every single one of them. I mean, he'll, I, all of the things have a Bible verse at the bottom. Bible John three right. sixteen, mm -hmm. which is a very famous Bible verse. Exactly. Uh, and it was important to him mm -hmm. because of because Christians are supposed to go out and spread the gospel. It's part of. Wow. It's part of what part of what they're called to do. So this is his version of handing out Bibles at the airport. Well, I mean, I mean, but the reason that he would do, uh, he would do art that um, be large, large editions, uh, and he would do calendars and playing cards and greeting cards and coffee mugs and nightlights right, and all these things, exactly. is because he, he, this is a man who was painting not for the critics at the New York Times. He was painting for regular people regular right. folks, folks that, uh, folks that buy their art from QVC. Uh, and he realized that not everybody can afford, uh, even, not everybody can a afford, Monet well, or a, an, an, an embellished <laughs> clay on canvas. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, even though these are very affordable, there are some people that that's a stretch for. There's yeah. str uh, some people in the world where uh, a, a lithograph on paper like this one is, is a stretch. There are some people that the only way that they're going to be able to have a Thomas Kincaid in their house is if they buy a calendar or a coffee mug or a nightlight. And so it was important to him to get his art into the hands of as many people as, they, as he could. And, and in our gallery, as the guests are walking to the Tropical Theater, uh, it literally stops traffic. I, yesterday we just had somebody that said, oh, I have his plates. I, so he's licensed the image on, on, on various uh, mm -hmm. uh, items as well. Now, as far as the, we were talking about the five Ps, if you watched our other uh, so-called lecture, um, does he have the prestige? Does he have the provenance? Tell us about the process. Tell us about the proportion. Well, it's important to note that Thomas Kincaid never sold his unique paintings. Oh, really? So they're like his children. He didn't want to offer them. Well, say, he, right? would, he would give them as gifts, oh. or every once in a while he would donate them so that 
people to to an organization to raise money. It'd be right. auction off to raise right. money. But he never sold them directly through the galleries. So uh, you, it's very very difficult to find a one of a kind Thomas Kincaid. They're they're almost all in private hands. As, as far as authenticity, a lot a lot of guests come up to me and say, "Why is it triple signed?" And we have their watermark, and and it's also signed on the back. What is what what is the the reason behind that? Well, the signature down here in the corner, this one is actually part of the part of the artwork itself. This is what's called a block signature, and then the signature over here is the DNA matrix signature. This is an actual signature with the uh, with the number in the edition, and then on the back there's uh, it's it's just a, a counter great. stamp, right? Counter stamp, yeah. uh, and it's not a, an actual signature; it's just a stamp. And we also have the Royal uh, Caribbean stamp as well. So exactly. Th th right. These are all lend itself to sourcing and, and authenticity. Well, and the fact that Art and Royal or Art on Royal is collecting these works directly from his publisher, Media Arts. Uh, so it's one degree of separation. Exactly. Like it, 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 you're, that, you don't you get, get any closer than that. Yeah, right? you don't get better because he didn't sell his one. I mean, ideally, well, the, le the, the best way to, to ensure provenance is to knock on the door of the artist and buy the art directly from the artist. This that, is one step of separation from that. Now, uh, I've, I've seen your shopping talks, and they're amazing. When you talk about Diamonds International and about direct buy as opposed to the 16 levels of middlemen. Right. It, it's, it's a similar analogy? Very similar with art. The best with way art. to collect art would be to knock on the door of that artist and say, I want that one. Right? Because not only is it going to ensure the provenance, but it's also going to be the least expensive way of collecting it. Because mm -hmm. what does the artist have invested in that work of art? His time, his talent, and the materials. Mm -hmm. right? and, the, and the other, the additional thing is that we scale that because uh, our art is on board all the fleet and we can provide the exposure for the art, for the artist. Well, and that's where I was going, is the and, next and, level yeah, there the next is, level. would be when that artist sells the right to recreate a, a, a graphic series based on that original painting, mm -hmm. uh, sells it to a publisher, well, then that publisher has his material costs and the markup from the artist and then his overhead, and he's going to mark it up when he sells it to an art wholesaler. Art wholesalers are going to mark it up when he sells it to an art retailer, and the art retailer is going to mark it up when he sells it to you. Collecting here on board, you're collecting... Not from the artist, not from the publisher, but then at the from the artist wholesaler level. Uh, so we've completely cut out the middleman, it's, it, and we're not in Beverly Hills at a high-end rent district. Uh, yeah. We're not in Miami. Um, it's another very and, important and, and part. So, and so what do we have? We, you have, think about, we have value, right? Good value. Yeah, you think about going to an art gallery. Yeah. They've got their rent. They've got their utilities. They've got their employees. Uh, and all that's significant compared to two yeah. of you. Share, yeah. have, with two cabins and yeah, no rent, here. you're even fed for We call free. it state rooms, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. Um, well, I didn't mean to throw you off there like that. Uh, so, Thomas Kincaid, uh, you would be able to uh, save considerable amount of money. So, if you guys come on in, it's okay. Come on. It's okay. Um, you could expect to pay more. Absolutely, without a doubt, on land. Well, yeah, if you're going to go into a Kincaid gallery and and get a, an embellished clay. Are these these are embellished clays or straight G clays? <coughs> these are G clays. Okay. Uh, oil on canvas and and uh, paper. Okay. Well. Uh, well and, they're, and they come framed in the frames and the and the, and the uh, museum quality plexiglass. All by the way, the, without getting into prices, and they're not going to go up. These are under under five hundred dollars. These are uh, somewhat a little bit over. So we got good value on the Thomas Kincaid. Right, especially compared to if you were to go into a, a land Frame. Kincaid gallery, because frame alone might be well, three hundred dollars, right? Because at the Kincaid gallery. Uh, you, that, that gallery owner has his franchise fees, he's got his rent, he's got his help, he's got his utilities. Those are things that you don't have because you're collecting directly from the artist publisher. And, that, and that's the great uh, experience, uh, uh, the guest experience for you to be on board and to be able to shop and get some good value out of it. And, and this Talk is, about a great keepsake yeah. of, your, of your cruise vacation. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as far as the process goes, of, like you mentioned the word G-Clay and uh, the... Uh, well, uh, these are all G-clays, but uh, what, what is that again? <laughs> G-clay is just a fancy French term for spray. It's just another printmaking technique. It's, it's the most modern printmaking technique. It's only about 20 years old. And um, if you have an inkjet printer at home, this is an inkjet printer on steroids. What they do yep. is they take a very high-resolution photograph or, or digital scan of the image. Now, a really good uh, hobby camera right now is... 12, 15 megapixels for a scan the, the for GPI, G Clay. Right? Yeah, scans for G Clay start at 100 megapixels. So, uh, so if you were to put a, a, a lens on that, you would see very, very high resolution high res, scan. High res. But then they go through and they they take every single flaw off it. They they'll literally go through and and 
Photoshop out specks of dust that happen to be on, on the bed when they scanned it. So you have a perfect digital representation of the art. And then they use these, these G clay printers that, um, for instance, your local, your, 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 yeah. your, your printer at home, your inkjet printer at home may have four, uh, four mm -hmm. colors. A G clay printer has as many as 16 different colors, millions of color variations. And plus, the best thing about G-Clay uh, ink is that it's so resistant to UV fading. It's more resistant to UV fading than and the any, original, right? What, than the original or any other printmaking medium. So what Mike's describing is actually a, a, a curating, a proofing, and, fi and a final print process. And then uh, there, there's collaborative printing as opposed to, uh, you know, well, hands-on printing. Can you describe that and, and the involvement uh, of the artist? Well, Tom, the, Thomas Kincaid and, and his... Uh, well, any, any of these, uh, any of these G clays, uh, because you're working from something that's created by the artist, the artist has his hands in the creation of the graphic works as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the G clays don't go to the printer until they've been approved by Kincaid. So only when, uh, only when Kincaid himself had approved the the digital image would they go to the G clay printer. Okay, great. Um, when we talk about serograph and lithograph, uh, I, I have to say that uh, gicle is is an amazing technique. Graham Nash from Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young actually got together with Jack Dungey. This was around the time of the Hubble telescope. I don't know if you, you know this. And Dungey took the existing uh, Hubble telescope uh, NASA technology, so it's actually space technology, and he applied it to Graham Nash. And he was one of the first people to produce, uh, they call it digigraph, but they don't like the word, so they, they've changed it. They, they kind of... Francophoned yes. it, um, but it is an amazing process. And as far as uh, 150 years half life on these, uh, when I was in the Vatican, I'm going to Sistine Chapel. Uh, everyone's taking pictures of Raphael and all this, and I'm like, why are they taking pictures of them? They weren't the originals. The copies were better than the originals. When you get in the Sistine Chapel and the, and the paint starts to peel, that's that's the difference. All right, well, that well, that's Thomas Kincaid, and uh, that concludes our talk on Thomas Kincaid.